So the standard um, forms of hormone th or androgen withdrawal therapy, or we call hormone therapy for prostate cancer, all have in common that they are reducing the male hormone level. Um, and the reason that's important is because the male hormone testosterone, in essence, is the, quote, food, end of quotes, for the prostate cancer cells. So if you take that fuel away, you kill many, many, many of the prostate cancer cells. You don't kill absolutely every single one of them, but you kill many of them and keep the remaining ones at bay. Now, broadly, there are two ways to accomplish that. There is something called surgical and this is a terrible word, so I apologize, castration, which really is what it sounds like. Anybody who grew up in a farm in Saskatchewan kind of cringes when I use that because it conjures up images of livestock. But basically what it is is under local anesthetic, uh, it's a day surgery that involves removing where most of the testosterone comes from, and that is the testicles. So the idea is not terribly attractive to many men, but the, the reality of it's fairly simple. Um, the difficulty with it is that you can't put the testicles back in, so that may, that's associated with lifelong low testosterone, which may be fine, uh, but may not be exactly you know appropriate in a given situation from our perspective, and certainly may not be what the man wants. But at that, if if it's in a situation where men may do better having lifelong low testosterone, say they've got very serious prostate cancer that's spread, um, and uh, they're really not too interested in you know coming off uh, hormone therapy later or something like that. Um, you know, having the testicles removed, believe it or not, is, is perhaps the simplest of all options. So the alternative to surgical hormone therapy or castration is medical androgen withdrawal therapy. The standard treatment, the mainstay of that is a family of drugs that we call uh, LHRH agonists, and they're injections that are given anywhere from once a month to every six months, depending on the brand and, and the formulation. And uh, that can be given by the family doctor, the urologist, by us. There, many of the products have a, 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 the availability of injections to be given either at home or at least in a community near where the patient lives. Um, now, there is another drug that's on the market that's semi-related, but it's in a slightly different class called an LHRH antagonist. That was a little different in that it's every month. Um, basically, occasionally we'll use that in a particular case, and so your doctor might prefer to use that for reasons I won't go into here a bit, but um, that is an alternative drug. I guess you could call that a non-standard one, although it's becoming more standard, I suppose. Um, Mainly the difficulty with that one is it's monthly as opposed to every three to six months, which is, which is so the monthly injections aren't quite as convenient. Um, now, sometimes the uh, LHRH agonist that I mentioned, the, the mainstay of medical androgen withdrawal therapy, are given in conjunction with a tablet. Um, and the tablet usually is in uh, a family of medicines called non steroidally antiandrogens, and they are t testosterone blockers. So basically, the injection will reduce the male hormone level. There's a little bit that's left behind, and so the idea of the tablet is it blocks the effect that that low level of remaining testosterone might have on the cancer cells. Um, now, most often we will use that in a, uh, at least at the beginning, so at least for the first four weeks surrounding the first injection, not with subsequent ones necessarily, but sometimes we'll use those tablets in an ongoing way, that is, all the while people are getting the injections. When the tablets are continued in an ongoing way with the injections, that is known as total androgen blockade. Um, now, non-standard hormone therapy. So you will read about using one of those drugs, those non steroidal anti-androgen drugs, by itself without the injection. And usually if we're doing that, we will use it at a higher dose than we would use it if we're using it with the injections. Um, and that drug is called bicalutamide, so we'll use it at triple dose by itself, bicalutamide, 150 milligrams, rather than 50 milligrams. That is a very unusual thing for us to do. Um, there are reasons why we might do that, um, but uh, it definitely would be considered non-standard. Sometimes you will hear about the use of a drug that is ordinarily not used as a treatment for prostate cancer. Um, Actually, there are two drugs in the same family called 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, or 5-ARIs for short. One of them is called finasteride. The other one is called dutasteride. Um, 
those drugs are usually used for uh, as part of the treatment for the symptoms of age-related benign or non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate. They do have prostate blocking characteristics, which is of course why we use them uh, for benign enlargement of the prostate, but they're quite specific. So uh, they don't totally block the effects of testosterone, for instance, on prostate cancer cells. But some people believe that they may have um, a benefit if you combine them with more standard hormone therapies. So sometimes, uh, well, some oncologists in the community, for example, will use them, but we would consider that non-standard. And they are not funded, for example, for use in cancer. Um, I guess when the term non-standard comes up, I mean, maybe it's fair to mention some of the newer drugs which are actually used for cancers that are so-called castrate-resistant, so I should define what that means. Castrate-resistant prostate cancer means the following. So we know if somebody has prostate cancer that we haven't been able to cure one way or another, and the primary treatment has been androgen withdrawal therapy over time, and that time that takes varies, it could be right away to many, many years later, the cancer begins to develop some elements of resistance to that androgen therapy, and that will become apparent mostly in uh, rises in the PSA. So there's a variety of things that we can do for that. There are two new drugs that are available for use in that particular situation, which actually more correctly are um, hormone therapy related agents. Um, so one of them is known by its brand name Zytiga, Z-Y-T-I-G-A, but its generic name is Abiraterone. Um, there's the other one that we'll use, which is in a slightly different class, is um, known as Xtandi, X-T-A-N-D-I, that's the brand name. The generic name is Enzalutamide. Um, what we're beginning to talk about is moving those drugs who work on castrate-resistant prostate cancer actually through hormonal mechanisms into um, the treatment of men who have hormone-sensitive prostate cancer as, I guess you'd say, a better hormone blocker kind of. So th that is not approved by Health Canada or the F uh, FDA in the United States. We're beginning to look at that in a research setting. So I guess you could call that a non-standard form of hormone therapy that's in the research realm. I've not ever seen anyone prescribe it to hormone-sensitive prostate cancer as a non-standard thing. It's always as a research thing. Um, but I think it's a fair thing to put in that category.